Father Returning Home is a short and appealing poem by Dilip Chitri about an old man in a cosmopolitan city where his own sons and daughters treat him as an alien. He himself is estranged from the man-made world. Now the first stanza opens with the line My father travels on the late evening train. The poet describes the train journey of his father while returning home one evening. So it is evening. The father stands among commuters in the yellow light of a local compartment. And the poet describes his father's reaction against the sights of the suburbs that pass by. His father remains completely unmoved. And this is because, of course, he's passing sights that are familiar to him. This is completely normal. Now, the poet then describes his, the father's pathetic condition as he travels through the rainy season. We learn how his shirt and his pants are soggy and his black raincoat is stained with mud and his bag stuffed with books is falling apart. Now, interestingly, we could posit that his bag represents his physical state. And it is him who is really mentally falling apart. There's an interesting phrase also before that, which is this phrase here, his unseeing eyes. So he's looking at the things that pass him by, but he's not paying any attention to it. And this creates the sense in the opening lines of this idea of his feeling alienated. He does not feel a part of the world that he's travelling in. And he therefore doesn't pay any attention to what passes him by. Due to old age, the poet's father's eyesight has become poor and therefore he finds it difficult to move about in the dark. We get this idea from this phrase, his eyes are dimmed by age. This of course makes us feel a great deal of sympathy for the father. Because he can barely see what's in front of him. Because of his old age. Now, there's a very, very evocative line that appears after this, which is, now I see him getting off the train like a word dropped from a long sentence. This is a very evocative and powerful image, like a word dropped from a long sentence. When a person is writing something and they decide, oh, I I perhaps do not need to add that word at the end of that sentence, they leave off that word and just finish the sentence by demarcating it with a full stop. That last word that they did away with, which is of no importance, this is what this old man has now come to represent in society, uh, by his family, He is like an unimportant word at the end of a very long sentence that can barely be remembered by the writer or his family. Interestingly, one could also say that this sentence that's being mentioned in this line is symbolic of his life and his life has been one long sentence which he's now at the end of and he's no longer important. The lines that follow indicate again the monotonous life that he lives. He hurries across the length of the grey platform, crossing the railway line, enters the lane. His chapels are sticky with mud. So even his sandals are not taken care of and he's running through mud he hurries onward and we wonder why does he hurry it creates a question for the second stanza why is he hurrying we hope that he's hurrying home to a family life to his uh, children and his um, warm family home But of course, this is not the case. 
In the second stanza, the poet represents the alienation of his father that he experiences in his own home. This is of course a very sad state of affairs. The poet tells us that his father drinks a weak tea and eats a stale chapati. So the chapati has gone hard, perhaps it's been left out um, and therefore become hard and not very tasty. It shows that even his basic requirements, his basic dietary requirements are not properly carried out by his family. His basic basic dietary requirements are not met by his family. He then reads what is perhaps a philosophical book because he goes into the toilet to contemplate man's estrangement from a man-made world. And it's almost the poet telling us the way that he feels. He feels estranged. He feels estranged from the world that is man-made that he no longer feels he belongs in. This exhibits that the man is visibly upset with his predicaments. Coming out, he trembles at the sink, the cold water running over his brown hands. Now, this idea of trembling carries two meanings. He trembles not only because of the cold water that's running over his hands, but he also trembles because of the way that he's feeling. He's obviously feeling worn out, broken down, barely able to stand, he trembles. We hear how his sullen children have often refused, not accidentally, not out of forgetfulness, they've obstinately refused to share jokes and secrets with him. Now this is interesting because jokes and secrets are what children, especially when they're young, share with their parents. When you want to confide in someone when you're young, the first person you confide in is one of your parents. And when you want to tell a joke, before you have the uh, confidence to share it with other people outside of your home, the first person you share a joke with is with one of your parents. But here, the children have refused to share jokes and secrets with him. And this is of course a very sad state of affairs, which shows just how alienated they have caused him to feel by refusing to share the things that a child naturally chooses to share with their parent, particularly when they're young. So in order to drown out the world that he's travelled through and the world that he has come home to, he sleeps. Listening to the static of the radio. Now, static of the radio literally is just the hum of the radio, nothing coming out in terms of music or a radio show or anything. It's just static. And he uses this sound to lull him to sleep and he dreams. And he dreams of his ancestors and his grandchildren who entered the subcontinent through the Khyber Pass in the Himalayas in the past. This is what he's talking about here. The narrow pass he's talking about is the Khyber Pass. But what we don't know is if he's dreaming about the past, about his ancestors, or his future, his grandchildren. The lines seem to indicate that he's dreaming about both. However, he does not dream about his place in the past or the present. But his dreaming and his sleeping provides for him a kind of relief from his mundane routine. devoid of any human contact. And this is when he finally finds rest and peace. Not on the train, not when he comes home, when he's having his evening meal, not when he's at the sink, but when he sleeps, listening to the static of the radio. It's a sad state of affairs 
and of course the reader is left feeling nothing but sympathy for this father who lives this monotonous life and we get the idea that this is the life that he lives through day in day out every day is the same there is a sense of there is here a sense of repetitiveness throughout the poem that this happens every day and we feel nothing but sympathy for the father returning home <laughs>